let's take a couple of questions very quickly. Hi, Phil Durbin from the Salvation Army. If I'm going to spend all my life on the social media sites in my day job, what's going to, what am I going to stop doing? Well, I think, I think the answer to that is uh, don't use it just because I'm telling you to use it. Don't use it because it's something you should be using. Um, think about the things you want to do in your, in your job, and they might be things like obviously, you know, keeping up with industry trends. They'll be contacting your peers and other organisations to find out who the good suppliers are. They might be uh, following what your ministers are up to to see if there's any big disasters. They might be watching your staff to see if they're doing anything they shouldn't be doing in the outside world uh, and monitoring them from that point of view. Um, and, uh, and find the opportunities where these tools will actually give you some value and, and don't use them uh, if they're not going to give you value. So have the courage to admit, just try something out uh, and stop doing it if it's not going to be useful to you. So, I mean, hopefully in most walks of the public sector there are, there are uses of social media. And the problem is, you know, it's easy to slip into tools and say, oh, everyone should be on Twitter, everyone should be on Facebook, whatever it is. And I think that's the, kind of the wrong way to approach it. It's more to think about uh, what is it you're trying to do and uh, what, what are the pain points in your current, current day job? Are you spending a lot of money on subscribing to magazines? Are you feeling like, you know, uh, you spend too much time going to, uh, to boring conferences and you want to find, use that time more efficiently? Um, and you might find that some of these tools are a way of doing that. So if, I'd say start from the goal, and, uh, and if it's not right for you, if it doesn't fit with your work, then don't do it. Do something else. But other people in your organisation might find it useful. Okay, there's a question at the back. I'm going to cut it off in a minute because of time. But... Um, this is a question from Twitter from Philip McAllister, and it's for staff. Um, how disappointed are you that government consultations have gone back to just being a PDF again? Where do we go from here? Well, I would say uh, there's certainly an audience for the PDF, you know, and I think if you work, if your professional job is to respond to government consultations, you want that PDF file, you want to print it out, and you want to consult with your members and write a response, and that's fine, everyone's happy with that. As I say, I think the, the, the issue is when we're trying to talk to a wider audience, and that's when that material doesn't work anymore. So how disappointed am I? Um, I suppose I feel like, you know, things haven't moved on as quickly in the field of how the public's engaged in these things as it's moved on say, in the GDS world. So, you know, we're, we're radically improving our transactions online. We're radically improving how we consume information online. You can see that VAT example. What we're not yet doing is radically uh, improving how we involve people in policy. So that would be my answer to Phil. OK. I'm going to go... Question at the back. Um, Danny Golding from Citizens Advice. Question from Mary. Um, what do you do when your development and operation teams are outsourced and possibly outsourced to different suppliers and they're not speaking? So um, and, <laughs> or even if they're in one supplier and not speaking? And maybe to link up with Steph's talk, do you think there's any role for using social media to get them to communicate with each other? So, so actually, the, the example I gave eight years ago, the uh, development team was um, in India. Um, and they were an outsourced provider, and the operations team were in uh, Costa Rica and Manila in the Philippines, um, and uh, again, another outsourced provider. Um, and so I think a lot of the time our role is to, to be a translator and to, to help conversations happen that aren't happening naturally, um, but also to reward that behavior. Um, you know, not, to, not to make it sound like dog training, but... Um, if my ops people came to me and told me I needed to tell my dev people something, I said, I, my immediate question was just, why do I need to be the conduit of that information? Why aren't we all talking? And I think creating some of the, um, the locations for those conversations to happen is important. Um, time zones are a pain in the ass, um, to, be, to be really, really frank. Um, but these days, things like Google Hangouts are brilliant. You can put uh, names to faces, uh, name, uh, faces to voices, where previously you might only have collaborated over, over conference calls, and I think that's really good. Something I've also seen work quite well is uh, things like Campfire, um, where you've got your whole team on you know, what's effectively, for those of us old enough to remember, IRC, an IRC channel. Um, be able to, to update, ask questions, um, and, and collaborate as they're, as they're doing work or as a, a release is happening. Um, and, and that's 
I, th I think social media has made that a lot easier, and those kind of tools, which are kind of you can make them semi-private if you if you want to, um, which is obviously sometimes important. I, I don't know that I'd want, you know, we've uh, we've taken down a server accidentally to be on, you know, our, our public Twitter account, um, but but I think that that all that all helps. Um, I do think that going beyond what's written in your outsourcing agreement to how we're actually you know, delivering the real value by um, by collaborating is the, the bit that's, I admit, really hard, but also really important. So, does that answer your question? Okay, I'm gonna close the, this particular session. Can we just say thank you very much to Mary and Steph? <laughs>